And good evening from Washington. I'm Larry O'Connor. We hope you're having a great Christmas and New Year's week. And in keeping with our special programming this week, we've got one hour with one of the smartest minds in the conservative movement, really over the last couple of dec decades. He's the senior fellow at the Hoover Institution. You know him, you love him. He's Victor Davis Hansen. Merry Christmas, Victor. Good to see you. Thank you for having me, Larry. Listen, I loved your article in American Greatness called 10 Steps to Save America. And I thought as the uh, hour goes through, we'll go through those steps and you can sort of lay it out for us. But I do want to start with some of the extraordinary news events that have happened in just this month. Uh, I'd love to start, frankly, with the FBI and what we've learned now about their involvement with Twitter, social media, in what can only be described as a process to encourage, entice, and almost bait these social media companies to censor the American people, to censor the New York Post, one of the oldest newspapers in America. This should be getting a lot more outrage than it's getting across the board, shouldn't it? Yeah, I think what, what's happening is the left has seen advantages in the Pentagon, the CIA, but especially the FBI, because there's no legislative give and take, no hesitation. Once they get an agenda and they weaponize those institutions, whether it's woke training in the Pentagon or whether it's the FBI to be a retrieval service for the Biden's family lost diary or <laughs> missing laptop, they find them very uh, useful. And the sad thing about this, it was a multi-pronged effort. I mean, on the one hand, they themselves internally repressed the uh, laptop where they where they leaked that it was probably Russian disinformation and even got former surrogates and these 50 intelligence agencies and other agencies to swear that it was Russian, basically to swear that it was Russian intelligence, while on the other hand they had their their own people working hand in glove with social media. And I guess that's going to, I think we're going to learn it's more than Twitter, yeah. too. And, and of course, this was all done under the guise of the FBI's role in uh, trying to protect America from foreign influence and foreign actors. Those powers came after the attacks of 9-11. And by the way, uh, Professor Hansen, I remember reading you after 9-11. That's, I think, when I first got to know you through your great appearances on The Hugh Hewitt Show. And, uh, and, and you were stalwart in the defense of this country and the war on terror, there were voices in this town that said, wait a minute, these powers could be corrupted and used in nefarious ways. And I got to say, I think they were right. I think they were too. Uh, all I can say, in some, we, we should acknowledge that after 9-11, there were people on both sides of the aisle that said it was inevitable that we were going to have an, a repeat of that major attack. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was the incompetence of Al Qaeda, or maybe it was our proactive, either domestically or abroad. But they didn't. They never pulled off anything anywhere comparable. So we did do. George W. Yeah. Bush, I think, has to be credited for that. And I don't. But, I don't raise this as a way of saying, oh, we should have never done it or anything. But but clearly, I don't think we had the safeguards in place or the oversight in place to, to no, preclude this I, from happening. It was a re reaction. If we had discussion in 2001, we would all be talking about the Clinton era firewall between the CIA and the FBI. Right. And right. We all got angry and said, you know. Once one agency has this domestic information, they can't give it to the agency that's in charge overseas and vice versa. But it, it's what I think what surprised everybody, it, there was always the left was knee jerk Pavlovian anti FBI, anti CIA. And what's insidious now is they have trumped the outdone the conservative side in blanket support of the FBI. I think they find it, the FBI, the CIA, the DOJ, uh, the Pentagon, they all find it very useful because they don't. there's no give and take. It's just a chain of command, green lighting of a social agenda of theirs. There are some in this town who are not even talking about a church commission kind of examination of all this. They, they, you know, Representative Comer, the head of the Oversight Committee, starting in January, saying FBI needs to be dismantled. I mean, has, has it reached that point? Has it? Yeah, has it reached, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think it has. I think. I think when they people say dismantled, I think what they mean is decentralize. Either take it out of Washington or break up some of its investigative bureaus and farm them out to different agencies. But the concentration of all of those powers inside Washington under, I mean, if you look at the last four directors, 
Robert Mueller was not candid under oath when he said he didn't know what the Steele dossier was or Fusion GPS. That was incredible to say that. Mm -hmm. And then we had James Comey 245 times feigning ignorance while under oath. And then we had Andrew McCabe, who lied to four different investigators by his own admission. And then Christopher Ray's testimonies, whether it's the school board or the mar lago raid, or when he's just kind of abruptly left and said, I've got to go, I have a prior engagement. He got on an FBI jet and flew to his vacation home. Yeah. So they haven't, they, they've, there's been a pattern there. And when you, when you add that to John Brennan at the CIA lying under oath twice, to Congress and, and James Clapper lying under oath by his own admission as director of national intelligence. There's something wrong, and yeah. I think, I don't know how to, I think they need to have a message. Well, and I, ironically, these are the same. James Comey kept saying, I, I did what I did to protect the institution of the FBI. The, uh, these are the people who have actually single handedly destroyed the institution <laughs> through they, their they behavior have. and the abuse of it. I also yeah. want to move on, if I can, to the January 6th uh, committee. Yes. They, of course, issued these criminal referrals, which really aren't worth anything, especially since the committee is not really a legitimate committee, considering the Republicans couldn't put their own uh, choices on there. Yeah. Uh, there was no, you know, uh, a cross-examination of any of the witnesses in real time. Uh, this, though, is a historic moment that this happened. And what is the end game here, do you think, sir? Well, I, I think it, it didn't quite work out as they planned. I mean... They have the media focus and attention, but uh, when the Republicans are going to take up power, I think we're going to start to learn that almost every aspect of this was not, it wasn't democratic in the sense that it wasn't c characteristic or consistent with American values. I mean, all of the testimonies they censored and edit, they won't allow people to have access to them of the interrogatories. And of course, we know that basically to be a Republican on that committee, you had to feel two criteria. You had to have voted to impeach Donald Trump, and you had to be politically inert and out of office in January. <laughs> and then we, the, the chairman gave all of these mellifluous, sanctimonious lectures about an election denial, but we remember Benny Thompson in 2004 voted not to accept the, the elect, election results in Ohio, which would have given John Kerry the election. So it, it was a bad idea from the very beginning. And of course, what we want to know is, I mean, it was a deplorable buffoonish riot, but there were so many things. I mean, who, who created this myth that Trump supporters murdered Brian Sicknick, the officer? Mm -hmm. And what were the actual conditions why we, we shot, Capitol Police, I should say, shot an unarmed military veteran for probably a low-class felony or a high misdemeanor of breaking and entering. And then we disguise the identity of the officer, which we never do in America when they're yeah. accused of shooting a non-armed suspect. And then we don't have any of the communications between Nancy Pelosi's office and the Capitol Police. And so there were so many things unanswered, not even to mention the 120 days of BLM and Antifa rioting, where 35 people got killed, $2 yeah. billion. Dollars. 1,500 officers. They stormed the White. They wanted to storm the White House ground. They sent the president, the Secret Service, into a bunker. They burned a federal courthouse, police. But all of that, no one seems to worry about. So I don't think it, it, it's going to be well received in history. And I think a lot of people are going to re revisit it in the next. Uh, congressional year. All right. Uh, listen, we're going to continue here on this special program with Victor Davis Hanson. We're going to take up his article in American Greatness, 10 Steps to Save America. If anyone has an idea how to save America, it's this man. And we'll get to it next on O'Connor Tonight.